I started my fanzine with the intent of getting established science fiction fans, in particular those who read fanzines, uh, which is also a democratic demographic that is generally more likely to vote and nominate the Hugos because they are Hugo attendees, or Worldcon attendees, to watch and nominate speculative fiction anime for the best dramatic presentation long and short form awards, I started with a list. I gave a list of anime series that had come out since the turn of the millennium, which I thought that literary speculative fiction fans would enjoy. Among them was Bodacious Space Pirates, a show I previously reviewed on this channel, a science fiction anime which I felt took the sense of adventure and wonder that was part of, it was a, it's only a fixture of 50s and 60s and going, in, going into the later 60s of what young adult science fiction um, based adventure stories and kept that part and then chopped off and threw away all of the dated political and social views, all the racism, homophobia, and misogyny, and that filled so many works of that period and make it make for a legitimate barrier for recommending those works. Astra Lost in Space is the next anime that tries this and pulls it off spectacularly. It came out last year, and how spectacularly did it do this? Well, this year it got nominated for and won a Sayun Award, uh, Japan's equivalent to the Hugo Awards. Astra Lost in Space is set in the far future where cl Class B5 of Cared High School are sent to the planet of Makpa for a camping survival trip, basically the science fiction equivalent of outdoor school. However, the sudden appearance of a small wormhole on that planet whisks the students to a distant, uninhabitable planet hundreds of light years away. Thankfully, and for the length of this show, the, by blind luck, the kids find a derelict starship, unmanned but still functional, orbiting over this planet. The ship has an FTL drive for inter-system travel and an anti-grav drive for intra-system travel, so they can get home in a few weeks. The problem is that the ship has doesn't have any sort of matter fabrication and limited water recycling systems, so if the kids are going to get home, they will need to find several inhabited worlds along the way to let them resupply so they don't die of, you know, starvation or dehydration. So we'll take all of these kids' skills and their various talents to make their way home. Now, odds are pretty good that after reading that synopsis, if you've read any older science fiction, uh, juvenile science fiction stories, from the 50s or 60s, or even even a passing familiarity with the plot synopses, you probably have thought up a, a few works of science fiction that the show is paying reference to, from uh, Tunnel in the Sky to Starman Jones, along with, at the first episode, a very extended riff on gravity. However, none of these come across as being del derivative references. Again, Astra Lost in Space, like Bodacious Space Pirates, puts its own spin on these concepts, stripping away the things that have aged poorly, the sexism, misogyny, racism, that's all far too often come up in those works, along with some, again, political views that have aged very poorly, though which sadly, sadly exist on our world. But to be clear, it's not that the show is apolitical either. The show is part of a big cluster of anime series I've seen lately, which kind of put the focus on the idea that Filial obligation isn't actually that important, and found family is a matters more, which, for fiction aimed at younger Japanese audiences, is nothing to sneeze at, I would say. On top of that, without getting into spoilers, Astra Lost in Space feels like a series that is using science fiction as an allegory to address another political issue, in this case, how history is taught in schools. Probably with a more particular focus on Japanese schools, it's anime made for a Japanese audience, um, but it works for American audiences in a similar way. The show doesn't go so far as far as to put a surrogate of an actual of any actual historical atrocities. Nothing like the rape of Nanking or any other Japanese historical atrocities from World War II or previous Japanese like feudal invasions or what have you of Korea, of the Korean Peninsula and elsewhere. Um, that had been otherwise covered up by the Japanese school system. But what it does do instead is it promotes the idea of digging deeper and questioning the accepted historical narrative by having a key narrative plot point being that the protagonists had been lied to about the history of their world and ultimately uncovering the truth and deciding that it's better that that information comes to light. Now, 
I'm not going to go too much further into that, because again, this is a thing that can be spoiled by the narrative. But still, considering that this show came out in the same year that HBO's Watchmen did, though before, and that show was also one which introduced audiences to the Tulsa Massacre for the first time, it's still a fairly significant plot point for the, and key narrative theme for the show. It's still a necromantalist approach, but like particularly considering, again, Watchmen uses the has the Tulsa Massacre as a key narrative point in the story and features it prominently and highlights it and brings it to the um to audiences to who might never have heard about it for the first time. Whereas Astro Lost in Space has no real actual similar allegories or doesn't go think go quite as far. Still, considering the Japanese government's reluctance to address some of their historical government, uh, historical skeletons in their closet at a level that's not quite as far as the Turkish government's reluctance for on their own skeletons, st it's still getting this much as saying quite a lot. Now, I really enjoyed this series, and again, I'd say for people who are seeing this series show for the first time, there is a mystery to this series. It can be spoiled, so keep that in mind when reading other stuff about the show. Um, this is one where I'd say, if you are definitely worried about spoilers, I would recommend giving the TV Tropes page for this, and possibly even the Wikipedia article, a bit of a miss. The show has, as of this recording, finally been and getting a physical release. I will have links to where you can pick it up from Amazon and write stuff in the doobly-doo below. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.